So what I'm talking to you about is the work that I've been doing in the online therapy unit for service education research. And um, this is a unit that was formed uh, with the help of CIHR, and I think our CIHR rep has left. But anyway, so thanks to the CIHR, we've been able to do this work. Um, it's through an interesting granting opportunity. If you haven't heard about it, I encourage you to look into it because I think it's an excellent way to get work like this um, done. So it's Partnership for Health Systems Improvement, um, and it's through CIHR, and uh, they're very much interested in funding researchers collaborating with providers or decision makers, ultimately to improve the healthcare system. So that's the funding that I tapped into um, with a bunch of partners. So it's a University of Regina partnership, and that's where I work. And we were partnering with, um, initially with uh, five health regions in Saskatchewan. And then um, we formed very early on a collaborative relationship with Swinburne University of Technology, which is in Melbourne, Australia. And we also um, have uh, representatives on our group from Saskatchewan's Ministry of Health. Before I begin, I just really want to acknowledge the whole team that I work with, because uh, I'm here, but it really is a big team effort. Um, so we have a research team and our primary knowledge users. Um, so for research, it's been a collaboration between psychology, public policy, uh, computer science, social work, medicine, and um, then I, as I mentioned, Swinburne University, but also um, a colleague from uh, Sweden, from Linkopi, and then our uh, primary knowledge group. And then this is, a, again, our huge team of uh, therapists that have been involved in research stuff. So we got interested in this area, like you, because of concerns about limited access to mental health care. So I don't have to tell you, only one in three people who need mental health services receive services in Canada for lots of different reasons. One of the unique ones in Saskatchewan is the snow. So you took pictures of snow? That is snow. <laughs> <laughs> you come to see me, I'll show you snow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, last year we had probably eight months worth of snow. It started in October and it went until May. And that is uh, the amount of snow we had. Um, so we know this is a big concern, and not just for Saskatchewan, but everywhere. Um, mental health is a leading cause of disability. So um, we wanted to try and improve access to care, and we became interested in internet CBT. And you may say, why internet CBT? Well, I'm um, the former president of the Canadian Association of Cognitive Behavior Therapy and a psychologist by training, so CBT is my bread and butter. And um, I also am the director of clinical training at the University of Regina, so I was very interested in being able to train our students in this thing that I was reading about, internet CBT. And so it was kind of my interest in this area that directed us down this path. Um, and it's really, a, a, as you've heard, only one, one area if you're looking at getting access to people um, through the internet, but the, the thing that, would, that interested us, us. So by internet CBT, we're putting basically resources on the internet, and then we were interested in therapist-assisted um, internet CBT, um, because we knew that there's quite a few resources out there that were self-directed, and we wanted to be able to offer something different that we weren't offering in Saskatchewan. So with uh, therapist-assisted internet CBT, basically the client is working on a week-by-week -week basis on these CBT materials, and then there's a therapist checking in with them um, and supporting them in that activity. And we became interested in this because there's a lot of research studies that show that this is effective, and the effect sizes are large, especially when you pair it with a therapist. And in fact, what we find is that not only is it effective, but patients find it quite acceptable. Um, they're likely to finish. They are very satisfied with it. And they say that they can form a strong therapeutic relationship. There's also an increasing number of studies that are showing that you can get the same effects that you get in face-to-face -face therapy when you provide therapist-assisted um, inter therapist internet CBT. So that's why we decided to go down this path, and we set it up through this funding as basically a quality improvement project. So we started by developing our website, 
Um, and then we developed all the policies and procedures that we needed to have in place in order to deliver this service. Um, and we moved on to training and implementation. Um, now we're at evaluation and dissemination and we're revising what we're doing and starting this process over. So I just want to tell you a little bit about um, some of the steps that we took to get this off the ground. So we um, developed our web application and <clears throat> we really harnessed uh, students in get, getting this web application going. It's not kind of unique. Um, the way that we set it up is clients uh, go online, but they have to be given a, uh, a login credentials. Basically, we don't, you can't go onto our site and, and use the materials unless you're given a username and password. So they go um, onto our site, and then once they're on, their, on that site, they're communicating with their therapist um, on that site, and all of the information is encrypted. So we had our computer <coughs> science group develop our web application, and then instead of developing the content ourselves, we basically licensed the content from Swinburne University. And I got to take a little trip you know, over and meet, this is David Austin, do you know David? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and his group at Swinburne. And we licensed three programs, uh, Depression Online, and then two anxiety programs, one for GAD and one for Panic. And um, we basically decided to license these materials rather than creating them ourselves because we didn't want to go through that process of developing all these materials um, when they had put so much work into it. And um, as you know, the, that process of getting feedback and developing materials takes a long time, so we, we decided to license them. The, pro the materials that we set up or licensed um, have 12 modules, and um, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about how that worked out, but uh, they're split up so that the, the information is presented with I'm not, a word, like there's text, but also um, videos and audio and lots of um, art and photos that help clients learn about various activities. Um, so the other part of getting this up and running was to, um, establishing all of our policies and procedures, which seems sort of, um, if you speak with the Australians, they were uh, they're sort of second nature, I think, to them now. But as a group starting out, we had to figure out uh, who were we going to include and who would we exclude and how would we get informed consent and how would we verify identity and what kind of health records would we keep and how could we ensure information was confidential and who would be qualified and what do we do in this event of an emergency. So we've actually published a paper on that if anybody's interested in sort of you know, what we came up with. Um, the other thing that we had to develop was a training workshop. So how would we train our therapists? And we've also published a paper on that as well. If you're interested. So after we did that, we went ahead and we trained 93 therapists. Some were students who would be under supervision, and some were working in the health regions. And from that group, we then had 55 people who went on and actually provided online therapy. And um, we, we didn't have everybody that we trained provided because after we trained them, we sort of discovered some things about who would have the most time and who could commit to offering the service in the way that we wanted to offer it. Um, and so that's why we sort of started with a large number and then we um, narrowed it down. The model that we have is a bit unique and I haven't seen this really in place in many places. So we have the unit at the University of Regina that coordinates the care. And then we have our therapists who are located, um, uh, initially it was in one of four health regions, and now we're spreading out to all of our health regions in Saskatchewan. And so we have therapists in these health regions that part of what they do is face-to-face -face services, and part of what they do is online therapy. And sometimes people wonder about whether this is a good strategy. I mean, why not just have everybody in the unit providing the service? And um, uh, part of the reason we wanted to do this was that we felt like in order to change care, it was important to have people within these health regions who could provide the service. And the other thing is that it offers um, greater continuity of care for clients. So we could start them off on um, online therapy, and then if a crisis emerged, they could go to face-to-face -face therapy or go from face-to-face -face onto online therapy. Um, so that was kind of the, the reason that we went with that approach. In terms of what this looks like for a client, um, 
In order to get the service, they start off, uh, initially we were doing a telephone screening, and I'll tell you about now we've changed to an online screening. Um, but we started off with a screening to make sure that they were appropriate. And if they were, then they would be given this username and password. And on a weekly basis, they go on, they complete a check-in, uh, they would review their module content, uh, complete their homework, and then email their therapist. And I say email, but it's actually messaging because it's on a, it's not a regular email, it's a secure server. And in terms of therapists, what they're doing is um, they're only going on once a week. It's set up uh, so that the client knows that this is not, uh, you know, you can't send an email and somebody will respond immediately or in 24 hours. They're told that the client, the therapist checks in once a week. And basically what happens is they um, review the client progress. They review any emails that the client sent during the week. And then they compose a uh, supportive email. Um, to the client, and if necessary, they'll, they can also call their client. And then after that, there's some documentation of services. And what we found was, with experience, this takes about 15 to 30 minutes um, in, for this particular uh, service that we were offering. Initially, when they start, when you're first learning it, it actually takes about an hour, because you're looking at materials and you're trying to figure out the whole thing, but once you gain experience, it reduces. I did have an example of, sometimes people wonder, what, what's a client email? Uh, so this is just an example from one of our clients. Um, I called Peter and what he'd said in module one, and I'm not gonna read out everything here, but um, you'll just see that he's writing um, about his experience of what he read and sharing with the therapist um, about that. And you can see that he's using um, some trailers and quotation marks and capital letters to try and communicate what's going on. And then basically the same thing with the therapist is um, responding back, again, all in text. Um, and you'll see in her piece that, if, if you were to read it, that it's a lot of um, supportive empathic statements answering clients' questions. It's assisting with application skills. You're not repeating all the information that's already online. It's um, assisting them with you know, asking about core thoughts and, and about maybe difficulties they've had about doing exposures. Um, it's also about encouraging gentle practice of core skills rather than suggesting others. So we really encourage them to stick with the content. We, don't, we tell them, our therapists, don't start bringing in extra stuff. One of the things about anxiety and depression is that people get overwhelmed with too, many, too much information. And so we say, like, just stick with these core skills and trying to really learn those skills. Um, it's looking for opportunities to build self-efficacy in the client, really encouraging them. So if they've been doing exposure, it's about saying, oh, you're on track, like, that's good. Or if they, you know, they did a really big exposure and it went poorly, it's about, well, let's break that down and make it smaller steps. Um, it's also about managing engagements. We really encourage people not to manage the deadline or to, to manage the deadlines. So they sort of have a deadline of working on the materials and also normalizing challenges that can get difficult. Um, we talked to our therapists about writing style. The number one priority is to say what you mean and to prioritize clarity. Um, we encourage people to use full sentences. We'll say you can use some use of these different techniques to try and mimic nonverbal um, information, but really to keep those to a minimum and to, to mirror what your client is doing. So you might use a few emoticons, you might bold things or put things in color, 